Good morning, brethren. Thank you very much once again for joining us this beautiful Sunday morning. We are glad because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are still online, uh, regardless of the restrictions that we have, we are still continuing to worship the Lord together. And this morning as we begin, I would like us to go into God's word and encourage one another as we go into a time of worship, a time of singing songs, uh, if you're at home, in your own, if you're in your own space, continue to worship the Lord uh, and we encourage you to sing along along with the songs that we have this morning as we praise the name of the Lord. May we go together and read together from the book of Psalm 95. We're going to be reading from verse 1. It reads as follows if we are there. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the, mountains, the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hand formed the dry land. Come, let us bow in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. So saints, this morning, once more, let's, let's go before the Lord in worship and our praise his name as we will be going through the songs that we have this morning. But before, before we go there, one more exciting thing is that we have started a new series, a new series or rather we are, we are starting a new series uh, titled Dealing with Offense. I am excited because I know that we are going to be built up, we are going to be growing uh, through the word of God and the Lord is going to be speaking to our lives as we deal with this particular subject in our new series in the, in the coming weeks. So may the Lord bless you as we worship the Lord this morning together. We are excited because that's why we'll be opening this series and sharing the word of God with us this morning as he speaks to us on this particular subject, uh, dealing with offense. So as we worship the Lord this morning, uh, may the Lord continue to bless you open your hearts worship him wholeheartedly and the lord will continue to bless us this morning be blessed as we worship the lord this morning together and after this that is why i will be speaking to us from here from the word of the lord may you be blessed thank you very much Sing one more time. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord, all the earth that I sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. Yes. 
Good morning, Impactors. Um, let me welcome you this Sunday. It's a beautiful Sunday for us to come together around God's Word once more. Uh, but before I go into God's Word, let me take this opportunity to thank all of you who prayed for me. Uh, you would be aware that the elders have announced that I have contacted um, a coronavirus. Um, I must say it has been difficult. There were times where one could not breathe properly. Uh, I had to be off from work as well and isolate and do whatever that needs to be done. Mm. But I want to take this opportunity to say to all of you, thank you so much. We, we really love you guys. We really appreciate what you've done for us. We really want to say to you, um, we felt loved. We felt uh, supported. And I mean, uh, our eldership team will always check on us, will phone. Some of them came here and I was like, hey, these guys are coming to my house <laughs> Uh, they are not even afraid that they will also catch this thing. But all of these things you've done them because you showed us how much you you love us as, as as a family. And so we just want to appreciate you and thank you. Even even if I'm not able to mention you, <clears throat> or I don't know if you've prayed for us, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you so much uh, for being there for us. One of the things that I've loved and I've seen with this eldership team is the fact that. You know, I've intentionally built that way. I've intentionally built with the eldership that way so that they know that we can be there for one another. And this is something that I want um, it to permeate through the life of the church. And I want it to come uh, come through uh, how we do church. I mean, you look in the book of Acts and you realize that they would meet in their homes and break bread and have fellowship together. That's why I am a firm believer in making sure that we have got these discipleship groups that are working together. People are meeting together. You see, on a Sunday, um, we come there. We actually come in there to celebrate what God has done throughout the week. Uh, but we never have an opportunity to sit one-on-one -on -one, um, and, 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 and ask each other how, how are things and all of those things. Because we have got a limited time on a Sunday. But the book of Acts will, will show you that when people were breaking bread in their homes and fellowshipping together and doing all of this, is many of the people were discipled there. Uh, and that's why I'm pushing that we train more people uh, to understand the life of the church as we see it in the Bible. Of course, a model of church that has been, uh, <laughs> has been shown to us, it is this one-man show thing that has killed so many people. Once you pick up an offense with that one man, uh, which is part of what I'll, I'll be introducing as a new topic for us. Um, and people then get hurt and all of that because they're thinking life happens on a Sunday. And I'm, 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 I'm a firm believer in this. And, and I can see it in our eldership team. And I hope that even with our deacons, with our discipleship groups, I know that um, uh, the new COVID has, has not helped our situation in trying to train and actually model what we're talking about. But we believe that at the end of it all, God will help us so that we, 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 we live this life together. We show each other that actually the life of the church happens in homes, in small groups where people are discipled, where people uh, come together in a way that says we are loved um, as part and parcel of what God is doing in the life of the church. And so I'm, I'm saying these things because I, I have seen on how our elders kept on checking, kept on phoning because we have intentionally built that way. Uh, you would have seen that our eldership meets and, and, and sometimes we meet over meals and time and again, we are able to, to make sure that we know what is happening in our lives. And so that's what we want to see with our deacons. That's what we want to see with uh, discipleship groups that we are trying to build in, our, in the life of the church. And having said that, I want to take this opportunity once more to thank all um, our preachers who have been speaking on this topic, the series that has now come to an end. Um, which was saying nothing changes until your mind change. Nothing changes until your mind change. 
And so we, we said to us, and I mean, of course, when I introduced this topic, as we read from Romans chapter 12, and of course, verse 1 and 2, but I also read uh, Proverbs 4.23, which says, be careful what you think, because your thoughts run your life. Be careful what you think, because your thoughts run your life. Uh, it was precisely because of that, because we were saying to us, if we are not able to manage our, li our, our minds, uh, we are in trouble because your mind is your greatest asset. Your mind is your greatest asset. Uh, if, if your mind is not renewed, and, uh, and of course it's, it's filled with all this negativity, uh, your life just becomes negative. And so that's why it was important for us to say, please, whatever gets your attention in terms of your mind, uh, it, will, it will run your life. I mean, the devil will fight for our minds. The world that we live in also fight for our minds. And of course, they want to feed us with the things that they will control us with. And so that's why it was important for us to do that. And we also said to us that, you see, our mind is the battleground for sin, you know. And if our minds are not renewed by God's weight, you know, sin it comes in there, encroaches in there and lives in there. And our minds uh, become calloused. And we are tempted by so many other things because our minds are not managed well. And so this morning I want to start a new series. Um, I want to start a new series and uh, it's closer to what we have been talking about. We've been talking about the mind, but this time I want to talk about something that is, is, is so close to what is happening in the world today and even in the church. Um, the topic for, 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 for today, which is going to be a series that we're going to run uh, for some weeks, and it will depend on how far we go with it. The topic is dealing with offenses. Dealing with offenses. And why have I gone there? It is because you would realize that there are so many people who are offended, you know, in the whole world. You know, it's not only in the church, it's not only in the homes, but the whole world. People are offended, you know. Um, you don't have you don't have to go far. Um, just look into your home. Just look in. Just look next to you. Uh, just look at the places uh, your 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 workplaces. People are offended. Uh, and so I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna start um, uh, my premise from this that if you are going to survive and fulfill your God given calling or purpose, whether you are in business, whether you are in government, whether you are in civil society whether you are in ministry, if you are going to survive and fulfill your God-given purpose, you must learn how to handle criticism and, and to overlook offenses. You must, you must learn how to handle criticism and overlook offenses. Because if you are offended, there are so many things that are happening in this life. And of course, I really would want to quickly go to God's way. And a few, there are a few... Um, texts that I would want to, to read this morning. If you are with me, I'm reading from Luke chapter 17. Uh, my interest is, is in nature. In fact, it's in verse 1 and verse 4. Um, you'll forgive me if I feel like, you know, I need to cough or whatever. I'll drink water and don't think like, hey, and now this guy is because now he's preaching on, <clears throat> uh, uh, on, on a television or whatever it is. Uh, that young people call these days um, now he's bringing a, a, a cup or whatever it is because I still have these irritations <clears throat> in my throat and so time and again when I drink don't think it is because I'm thinking uh, some, uh, I'm, I'm better it's just because I want to clear my throat so we are reading from Luke chapter 17 my interest is in verse 1 and verse 4 but I'm going to read from verse 1 to 5. I read, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it reads as follows. Then he said to his disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come. But woe to him through whom they do come. And I mean, that is Jesus. He's talking to his disciples. He says, it is impossible that no offense should come. Because he was just simply saying, as long as you live on earth, you will be offended. And if Jesus can say that, you must know that this is, this, is, this is something else. If Jesus can start by saying to his disciples, there is no way that you're not going to be offended. As long as you live on this earth, you're going to be offended. But he says, woe to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he be thrown into the sea. 
than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. Verse 4. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostle said to, uh, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, increase our faith. <clears throat> so this is what Jesus does. He starts by saying, people will be offended. Even you, you will be offended. This is impossible. As long as you live on this earth, you will be offended. But there's something that I love in verse 4. And he says, if somebody sins against you and they come to you seven times in a day, and they say, forgive me, you must, you must forgive them. That's what Jesus says. And I love, I love the response of the disciples. They say, hey, Lord, increase our faith. All what they were saying was, what you are saying, it's impossible. It is extremely impossible. And so, um, my, my first point of departure is this one. Is the fact that if you thought you will never be offended because you are a Christian, you are not reading the Bible you are reading. Because the author and the finisher of our faith, the owner of what you call Christianity, Christ himself says it is impossible. You will be offended. And it's a given. And so if it's a given that you will be offended, and the disciples are saying, yo, 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 Jesus, please, just increase our faith because um, we know that if we, if we are offended, we want, to, we want to revenge. In another text in Matthew 24, verse 10 to 13, New King James Version as well. This is Jesus talking to them. And of course, he was talking to them about um, um, when will the, the, the end come? And, and what are the signs that you see that, that the end has come? And it says, and then many will be offended. And of course, this is a sign. This is one of the signs that the, the end is coming or has come or is approaching, whichever word you want to use. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, and the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. <clears throat> In Luke, he says to them, it is impossible for you to be on this earth and not be offended because offense will come. In Matthew 24, he says, for you to see that the end is near, people will be offended. And this is how he says this. He doesn't say uh, a few people. He says many will be offended. When you are surprised that so many people are so off offended, you must know we are living in the end. These are the end days because people are offended everywhere where you go. People are offended. And Jesus said, and then many will be offended. And what will happen after they've been offended? They will betray one another. And once they betray one another, hatred will come. And this is how they follow each other in that verse, in 10. And then they will be offended. They will betray one another. And they will hate one another. That's very heavy for Jesus to say that. A few things that I, and of course, I'm, I, I really want to talk about this thing. That how, how do you deal with offense? How, um, how do you walk as a Christian who is um, walking free from offense? Some of the characteristics that you are offended, and I'm, I'm going to start there because uh, there are a few things that I wanted to check as we go through this talk this morning. What are the things that will be characteristics to show that you are offended? Number one, when you realize that it's always about you, you must know that you are offended. It's always about you. Everything is about you. Yeah, they didn't do this to me, and they did this to me, and then they then they no longer love me, they don't check me, they don't once it's always about you, you must know 
you are offended. You need to check who has offended you. Because people who are offended, it is always about them. It's never about other people. It's about them. And of course, we'll come, we'll come to that. The second thing that you'll know that you are offended, it is when you get angry very quick and often. When you get angry quick, quickly, get so angry quickly and more often, you must know that you are, you are offended. You see, people who are offended, it doesn't matter how much you try. They get angry by anything. They come to church and then they don't like how you sing, they, they, are, they are angry. They start saying, I eh, know in the past we used not to do this. You are angry, you are offended. Go and deal with your offense because you get angry by anything. I mean, the children in the house, your wife or your husband, they say something, you get quickly angry and it is a sign that you are offended. You need to deal with that. You get angry quickly and more often. Sign number three that you are offended. You become so impatient. You become so impatient. No. Since but hey, I'm okay, okay, hey, whatever. Now you're not even aware. You're not. You are even oblivious to the fact that we are living in a pandemic. Things change every day. Even some of us, whether 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 we wanna be the best leaders or the worst leaders, but some of the things we can't do them as we 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 ought to, or the way we have planned to do them, simply because the days we are living in are very unpredictable, very unpredictable. But because you are offended, you become so impatient with everything. Impatient with everything. You even want to remind us of where we come from. Or oh, Egypt. You know, in Egypt, there were, uh, you know, there were garlics and cucumbers. And now you are here. And uh, very impatient with the process. Very impatient with what God is doing. To know that you are offended, you, you must look at yourself. If you are too impatient about so many things, you must know. You've got, <laughs> you've, you, you've been offended and you need to deal with it. One of the characteristics, and of course, characteristics number four, and these are, these are some of those that I'm thinking about. I mean, there can be many others, but these are the things that I'm thinking about that are key to me. <clears throat> People who are offended, they hold grudges. They hold grudges. And I mean, Jesus says to his disciples, 70 times 7, this is how you must forgive them. Uh, so it means if every time they come and say forgive me you must forgive them otherwise you'll be offended you will keep the offense you will keep the grudge to show that you're offended it's when you keep grudges and there are christians who, who keep grudges you 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 i mean they will sit down with you and say and they will even remind you of something that happened in 1982 when we started this church in 1982 yeah but you keep grudges. You must know that you are offended when you keep grudges. And you need to deal with that. Because it is going to kill you. Number five. And of course, I'm just giving you characteristics to show that you are offended. When a person is offended, they develop serious insecurities in their lives. They become so insecure. It doesn't matter what. They become so insecure. Nothing satisfies them. And their insecurities will come out um, time and again in smaller things. Yeah, but since they arrived here, we no longer even have time. We can't even go in front and preach or do something. You, you, you can tell that they are insecure uh, because they have been offended. So these are five characteristics and of course there are many there are many others i just wanted to touch on these ones number one i said to you it is about you it's always about you they don't they don't check me they don't then always when it's about you you must know you're offended go and deal with that offense two you become quickly angry and more often not only angry but more often everybody even in the family whether at work with your wife with your children everybody you become so 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 quickly angered I mean, your husband, when I'm with him, how to say, I'm going 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 to
Because you have been offended. Angry. Deal with your anger. Three. You are so impatient. You don't even know how to wait. You don't even know that there are things that we say, we call them processes. We walk through processes. We tell you that these are the things that we're working through and Corona is actually, uh, at times, we are not able to meet, we are not able to do these things. Yeah, nah. You're even comparing things that are incomparable. And when it was in those days, but then in those days there was no, there was no Corona. You are so impatient, even with yourself. And number five, you develop serious insecurities. You become insecure with everything. Even smaller things, they just get you angry. You become so insecure. You are in a team. I mean, I, I, I tell our elders, because we meet more often with our elders, whether it's on, on a Zoom or, or, or together, or we meet, or sometimes they come to my house, we meet more often. And that's what I said from the beginning, that that's what I want to see happening in the life of the church. Uh, that means we meet in small groups, discipleship group, and, and, and make sure that the life of the church happens. And of course, like, like I'm saying, uh, the pandemic is here, and I'm, I'm, I, I understand. And I, I, I came out of that now. I'm still recovering. I, I, I know how it feels to be isolated. It, it feels like uh, nobody cares. It feels like the world is against you. It feels like that way. I've been there. But I can tell you, my friend, because I am not an insecure person, I know that people are also dealing with their own problems. They're also dealing with their own challenges. So I don't become insecure when somebody doesn't phone me. I don't sit here and feel like people no longer love me because they don't phone me. Those are the five, the five things. I wanted to throw them uh, ahead so that you understand. And so let's go back to our text. It says, many will be offended. <clears throat> You see, once, once you are offended, and Jesus says it will move from being offended to betrayal. You start betraying people. And once betrayal has given birth to the fullness of its time, you hate people. You will be shocked that offended people are the ones that betray others, but they are also full of hatred. And once you come to that stage of hatred, listen to what Proverbs says. When, when a person has come to that, listen to what Proverbs says. It says, Proverbs 18, 19, it says, A brother who is offended is harder to win than a strong city. Yes, like, listen to that. Listen to what God's word says. A brother or a sister who is offended is harder to win than a strong city. You know, you know, the cities were fortified. They will build strong walls around them. Fortified. So that they are secure. But a person who is offended, it's harder to win. I mean, you could even go and break into that, into that city and break the walls and get into. But the person who is offended, they are so close. They, it's like the Bible says, and remember, the scriptures do not exaggerate. When the Bible says something, the Holy Spirit is not exaggerating. It's telling, his, as, as, uh, telling it as, as, as it is. So when you are offended, the Bible says, you are too difficult to win. There's nothing. There's nothing that we can do that will satisfy you. There's nothing that we can say that will change you. You need God. Because the Bible says you are so hard to win because, you're, because of an offense. And once that happens, you betray others and you become a hater. It is so interesting that you come into church and you realize that there are so many people who hate others. You hate others because you've been offended. Instead of going and dealing with your offense... And, and going to the person that offended you. Now you start betraying others in church. And, and, and this is a sign. I mean, look at people that are offended. They attack each other. When people are offended, they attack each other. They call each other. I mean, they become, uh, they become schemes. Huh? This scheme, scheme of offended people. 
and start looking at their lives. I have never seen anybody that is offended and they form the scheme that they become successful in life. They don't. Because they wallow in their own offense. Wherever they see, they drink tea, you remember what he did to us. When they open their mouth, it is because they are like a brother that is offended that it is so difficult to win them. Even some of the people in the church, even in our midst, there are people that have been offended by things that some, some of them I don't even know. But because they've been offended then, they want to drag their offense and bring it here. Even if you are trying to win them, you can't. Until they, they decide that I want to release these people that have offended me. You can't. You don't, there's nothing you can do. Go to their homes. Listen to them. I mean, some of them wish that we, we don't succeed. And we wish that they don't succeed. Uh, because they've been offended. Instead of dealing with their offense, they even wish wrong things for people. And Jesus says, as long as you live in this earth, you'll be offended. But the important thing is how you deal with it. I've been in ministry for a long time to know that people would, would, people would offend you. And I've been offended several times. I can tell you. But I chose. There was a time where I chose that I'm not going to live in the offense. No, I'm going to forgive those people. Whether they, whether, they, whether they deserve my forgiveness or not, I'm going to forgive them because it is for my own good. It is for my own future. It is for what God has called me to do because if I don't, I'm not going to be successful in what God has called me to do. And I never ever think that because I've been offended in 1989 when I was a youth leader somewhere and I was, I was part of that church and I was in the church board and now uh, in 2021 I'm not going to be offended. Even since I arrived here, there are people who said things that they don't even know, they don't even understand. They say these things just to offend you. But because I have known how to deal with offense, I can tell you my friend, I don't... I, I, you, I, I always say to people, you can say as much as you want. As long as you're not talking to me and you're talking about me, I always <laughs> treat you like a coward. Because cowards never, never approach you. They, 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 they want to try and influence others about you simply because they have been offended and they're not able to deal with their own offense and therefore they betray others and then they start hatred. Deal with your offense. Make sure that you live life that is worthy of what God has called you to be. Because if you don't, you will be offended, you will time, you will, you will betray others, and you will hate people. Some of the things that I want you to, 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 to look at is this one. When you are offended, you stop learning from others. You learn nothing. Even when people talk, even when people want to do stuff, you can't listen to them because you, you're offended. You can't learn anything. These elders and everybody and all, they can come and say, let's attend, uh, we've started um, Impact um, uh, Equip School. Let's come. There's nothing to learn from them. There's nothing. Because you're offended. Deal with your offense so that you can learn something from other people. Even the, even the worst person ever on earth, you can learn something from them. How much more as a Christian? Just make sure that you deal with your offense so that you can learn from other people. The second thing that will help you when you deal with this, with, with, with this offense, it will help you to be less defensive. People that are offended, they are always defensive. They defend everything. You know, the nature of God, our God, it's a giving God. He gives. For God so loved the world that he gave. It's a giving God. He gives himself. And we as his children, we are meant to give to the world what we have received from Christ. In actual fact, if you sit and say, yeah, you don't know what those people did to me. Let me ask you a question if you are a Christian. How much more 
Have you sinned against God that Christ had to go to the cross and die for you with all your wrongs, with all, with everything that you've done that is so wrong against other people, against yourself, against people that you work with, against your family. Christ had to go and die for you on the cross. Now imagine if you was to say, hey, Father, these ones, let's not, let's not die for them. Starting from Adam, they, 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 they've, they've chosen to be like this. Let's just obliterate the whole world and kill them and create new people and new world without them. No, he went to the cross, carried your offense, your sinful offenses. He carried them to the cross and loved you. And so if you can come here and say, you don't know what they did to me. I don't know. You are right. I don't. In actual fact, you don't know what people did to me. But let me tell you, my friend. If you're always going to be defensive simply because you've been offended, your life is in danger. People that are offended, they are always defensive. They defend themselves on everything. And we listen to your offense and we know you are the wrong person to be around us. Because offended people carry negative energy. They never carry anything positive. They carry negative energy. So number one, I said, if you are offended and you don't deal with it, you are not going to learn anything from anybody. You miss the opportunity to learn from other people. Number two, you always become defensive. There's nothing, there's nothing that people will say that you'll feel like, yeah, hey, maybe I can learn from here. No, you actually, even in the church, you look for people that are offended like you and you connect. It's like Vodacom to Vodacom or MTN to MTN. You find each other. But let me tell you, you will, you will remain defensive. The person that has offended you, they live their lives and where now you are dying in the offense. You need to deal with it. Stop being defensive. Because when you are defensive, you moan, you complain. You are bitter. There's nothing that builds you. There's always negative energy around you. And some of you, let me warn you, if you keep on working with people that are offended and that you've got the referral spirit of their offense, they are actually destroying your future because you are carrying their offense forward in the life that you shouldn't be. Like I told you, I have been offended so many times. Some of the people that offended me, actually, th these are the people that I've helped. I've gone... I've gone all over to help them to make sure that their lives are better than mine. And then later on, they betray you and they do all of these things and then they offend you. Now, imagine if I was holding them. I will not be here. I will not even be preaching. We will not be where we are today. But because I decided that in dealing with the offense, I must make sure that I release them from my heart. I forgive them like Jesus said. 70 times 7, forgive them. Even when they don't deserve it. You did not deserve to be forgiven by Jesus Christ. But he did forgive you. So if you want to live your life properly, deal with your offense. The third thing. You know, when you're offended, you make irrational decisions. You, you don't become smart even in how you make decisions. You make decisions out of a spirit that is hurt. You think out of the head. Because your decisions are made from a point of offense. You come to church, you see the person that once offended you, then you leave. You get into your car, you leave. Ooh, you're gone. You think it's helping them. It's not. It's not helping them with anything. Actually, it eats you away. It eats your life away. Look at a husband and wife when they are offended, when, they, when they've offended each other. That marriage can never be fruitful. Never. So when people come to church and they are offended, they never become fruitful. They don't grow in the Lord. They don't grow in God. Beautiful things that God wants to do with them. There are some people in our church that have been offended by some pastor or some people somewhere. They want to carry that offense and bring it to us. It's like, I offended them. I don't even know. It's like me leaving this church with my offenses from, from where I've been offended. We can 
go anywhere. Otherwise, you listen to a man that is offended. And every time when he speaks on the pulpit, say, you oh, I trust that as a Lord. Don't trust them. Don't trust them. They, they will turn your heart into mincemeat. Simply because I've been offended where I come from. You don't want that kind of a leader. You don't. Actually, if I feel like a leader speaks like that and they use the pulpit to deal with their, deal with their enemies, I don't want to be part of that church. Because you're not helping me. Deal with your offenses. Because if you don't deal with your offense, your decisions will be irrational. Some people left the church irrationally so because they've been offended. They've never been offended by any of these elders that we have here. They've been offended by something else, but they left the church simply because they've been offended. And of course, it's your choice. I love how God works with us. God, God doesn't compel us or force us. He will put life and death and say to you, choose. And so when you choose... When you choose to go to, <laughs> to destroy your life simply because you've been offended by somebody somewhere and you've never dealt with that offense and you want to apportion that offense to us as the, as the new leadership, you are misplacing your offense. You need to go and deal with it. Go to those people and go to them and say, look, I've been offended for many years. And the problem with offense is like it eats you up. It destroys you inside. Let me be vulnerable. Let me be vulnerable here. And I know that might just get me into trouble at some stage. There are some people that are, stay, are, are sitting in this church and I don't understand why they are here because they are offended. They always, every Sunday they are there, but they are offended. And I'm like, you can't grow when you are offended. You can't. You can't grow when you are offended. You need to deal with your offenses. There are people who live with their families, they are always offended. The wife can't say a thing. The husband can't say a thing because they are offended. You can't grow. That family is doomed. Because you can't sit down and say, look, I've been offended. It doesn't matter how long you've been offended. But once you hear this message that Jesus says, offenses will come. But how you deal with them is important because you need to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you are a prisoner of your offense. And so I'm, I'm saying to you, if who have been in the church for many years, that have been offended by people in the church more than anywhere else, but they're still preaching the gospel and they still love you irrespective of that. You must know that we have learned lessons. Our lessons are these ones. I am not going to make decisions for this church and for where we are going, even in our eldership team. I'm not going to make decisions based on offenses. Somebody actually once said to me, some of the elders that you brought here, hey, you, it, it, it's a mixture. It, it, it's a broad church of eldership people. Because I don't bring elders based on the experiences of others or how they don't love them. No. You know, Mark chapter 3, the, the Bible is very clear from verse 18 and says, Jesus called to him those he wanted. And Luke chapter 6, 12, and he says, and when he spent the whole night praying, he appointed 12, of whom he also designated apostles. And I can tell you, some of the people in Jesus' team, I would never appoint them. But Jesus had faith for them. Then imagine if you appoint Judas, and this guy is going to kill you. I mean, Jesus knew everything. He was 100% God. He knew. But he appointed him. And some people come with this rotten theology, and they say, yeah, no, it was because God's... Uh, God's um, uh, plan had to be fulfilled through Judas. And I'm like, no, that's not true. There's no such a scripture. It could have been anybody in that team. It could have been Thomas the doubter. It could have been Bartholomew. It could have been Peter or John. It could have been any of those guys who betrayed Jesus. It could have been any. So don't tell me that this God just hated Judas so much that he put him in Jesus' team so that he can, he, he can fulfill his promise. No! We are led to sin by our own desires. God tempts no one. We are led to that. And of course, Judas used to keep the monies there. You know that. He used to, he used to keep the monies of that team, of Jesus' team. The very same thing that he was gifted in doing, in keeping the money properly. But it's the same thing that led him 
to betray Jesus for money. And he realized later that actually I let my gift destroy me. That's why when young men are gifted, they can heal people and whatever, and they've got nowhere to account. They heal a few people and then they start ministries and then they start messing around with those gifts. So people like Judas, people like Peter, I mean the guy would deny Jesus three times. And Jesus even knew that this guy suffers from verbal diarrhea. In Matthew 17, it's, he saw Jesus transfigured and Jesus says to him, when we go down, don't tell anybody what you've seen. Because he knew that Peter talks too much. But he was, in, he was still on his team. And But this is the same guy that took over Jesus' team in, from Acts chapter 1. Because in, 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 in John chapter 21, Jesus restores him. He restores Peter. He says, do you love me more than this? Same question three times. And Jesus, I mean, Peter said, Lord, you know everything. Because he has learned these lessons. But Jesus had faith for him to be in his team. And maybe I would not have that kind of a guy. Maybe I would not have a kind of a guy like John and James, his brother. The guys who actually, you know, they, these were cheese boys. Eh, no, Lord, eh, Tina, we come from this eh, big family. Let the other one be on the right, let the other one be on the left. Even their mother knew that. Jesus still had them in his team. Why am I saying this? Is because, you know, when I have people in the team that I'm leading, I am not going to, I'm not going to look at them through your eyes simply because you're offended by them. Because you've got an issue with them. Even all of our elders, they know that you can't survive in that eldership team when you've got these offenses. When you've got this spirit of division, you can't. You, you can't that eldership, you can't survive in my eldership. You, it's not possible. You can't be in that team when you're offended when you have got all these things of secret and then wanting to divide and all of that. No, we love each other. And we are so different in that team. So, so, so different. But that's how God made us. He never made us a homogeneous group. It is because in our different giftings, we complement one another. When you are offended... You become so insecure that even in a team like ours, when you don't have an opportunity to do something like Tobejani does, I mean, this guy does uh, these things that we are doing now. I don't even know how to do these things. No, it's always Tobejani on the cameras and all of these things because uh, I came with him from law. <laughs> An offended person becomes so insecure. They become so insecure. They don't even know they're gifting. Yeah, there's, there's something I've learned about Marshall. Uh, Tombe. That guy is gifted. And the things that he does, and sometimes in terms of, you know, and he will come with, with things that I look at them and I'm like, yo, the sound desk at the back. Marshall just got some, uh, uh, some of the things that he could use to, to, to build such a beautiful sound desk for us. I could never have done that. Never, not even once. The painting in there, in the church building. The carpets that we put there. I looked at Marshall and I'm like, if I did not have this guy in my team, who, hey, this team who, 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 will be like a crippled person. But because we've got a man who knows how to do those things. When it comes to property and all of those things, I'll know that we've got Marshall. I don't even need to know where is what in terms of that property. Marshall must know that. Because he's gifted, I've seen it, and I don't have to, I don't even want to meddle in the affairs of that thing. The more we, we, we have got a vision even to build and to do all of these things, I know I've got a guy in the team. And it's a showcase that I'm not going to sit there and, and, and lead the building team when we start, when we start uh, extending that building. I'm not going to lead that thing. I already know that in my eldership team, there's a guy who knows how to do this thing. So much of must lead that thing. You must just come to me and say, that's why we need, we, 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 we need 500,000. And I must go and find that 500,000 in trusting God and believing God. And my father must leave that thing because in this team, he's the guy who does these things. We are all secure. And I've said to the guys, when you come into this team and you've got insecurities, you must know that you have been offended somewhere. Go and deal with the insecurities because otherwise you're not going to survive here. 
That's why many of you look at us and you're like, and, you're, and I think others are hoping that one day we want to hear, maybe and one day uh, this toy and this dumb or this rancho, one day they will fight. Not in that thing. I, that I can tell you now. If my time to lead is over, God will tell me that your time to lead is over I, because I've got no insecurities. There are so many other things that God can ask me to go and do. I'll do them. Why? Because I am not easily offended. I've learned on how to deal with offenses and still live with people. Even people that I may not agree with. I want them in my team. I want them in this team. Why? Because there will be a mashobo that can do something that I can't do. Why? <clears throat> because there can be a tobejani that can do these things that I can't do. Why? Because there can be as pastoral as Dombo and, and, and Ranzolas who will go and check people and go and, and tell you uh, so and so, we've met so and so and all of those. That's their gifting. Actually, they make me look good in leading that team because of their giftings. So there's no, there's no way we're going to compete. Other people have been offended because they feel like they've never been given an opportunity to do certain things. When you make decisions out of an offense, you are not going to come right. There's so much I want to say, but I want to stop here because next week I want to tell you about certain things on how to uh, on how to build around dealing with offen uh, with offenses next week i want to talk about your feelings how unreliable sometimes your feelings can be i'm going to start there and show you that if you always trust your feelings they will let you down proverbs 14:12 says there is a way that seems right to a man but in the end it leads to death just because you feel that way, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't make it right. In actual fact, there are people that you felt something about them only to find that you were wrong. So I'm going to show you how to deal with offense in terms of your feeling, how you feel. You need to own your feelings and subject them to God's word so that you move forward. So let's meet again next week in this series. As we are learning on how to deal with offenses in our lives. And God bless you. Let's hope I'll keep on recovering. And uh, your prayers as they help me to move forward. But dealing with offense is key, Bazalwan, Because the world is offended. Whether it's in politics, whether it's in government, whether it's in business. In church is worse. Dealing with offenses. God bless you. Amen. Wow. Thank you very much. That's why for such a powerful word. You know, the subject of offense is, an, it is a very important subject in our lives. And we really want to appreciate you for being so obedient to God and sharing with us the heart of God from this word. Because one way or other, we are bound to come across some kind of offense or other. And we should be able as believers to deal with those kind of offenses and come out victoriously. So thank you very much. And that's why once again, for being so faithful in sh sharing with us what God had laid into your heart. We really appreciate it. And may the Lord bless you. Thank you very much once again, brethren. As we continue this morning, we have come to the time where we are going to be giving unto the Lord. And I would like to encourage us to give from the depth of our hearts as we give unto God this morning uh, wholeheartedly. And I want us to just quickly go into the Bible and read uh, from the second book of Corinthians chapter 9. We are going to read in verse 7. And uh, if we have found it, it reads as follows. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So this morning, saints, as we give unto the Lord, may we give cheerfully, may we give from the heart that is thankful and grateful for who God is and from the heart that loves and adores God for who he is. So thank you very much, saints, as we give to the Lord and may, may the Lord bless you.
Wow, what a beautiful time of fellowship. Once again, brethren, thank you very much for joining us this morning. It's been a beautiful time of worship and a beautiful time of listening to God's word as we've begun a new series. May the Lord continue to bless you even as you go into this new week. Uh, may you be blessed in everything that you do. Uh, but before we go, just a reminder that next week, Tuesday, the Impact Equip School is still continuing and we'd like to encourage everyone to be part of it and join us as we continue to learn and grow from God's word together. So please make sure that you attend uh, online as we continue to do our, our, all our services or rather all our meetings online uh, in, the, in the coming week. So may the Lord bless you as you join us next week, Tuesday. Uh, one more thing is that we are still continuing with our discipleship groups. So if you do not belong to any, we would like to encourage you to find one and um, belong to one so that you do not miss out on what is happening in the life of the church and continue to grow with other believers. So uh, if you do not know which one you belong to, please feel free to speak to us. We will be able to assist you and lead you in the right direction with regards to a discipleship group. So thank you very much, saints. Uh, enjoy the, 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 the new week that is coming up and continue to be to take care and be safe. Um, wear your masks, uh, sanitize and take care of yourselves and your families as the Lord continues to close us and uh, protect us even during this difficult time that we are living in. May the Lord bless you as you go into the new week. We love you. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.